crashing Willie's Garage. Ha! Welcome to Willie's Garage. I am Nick, and I'm a huge ALF fan, have been since I was a kid. George was familiar with ALF, but hadn't seen an episode until I forced him to be on this show, right? <laughs> That's correct. I think of myself as, you know, in the Olympics when there's somebody like uh, doing the pole vault and then they cut over to the family, like, and they're applauding. They've been, they've sat through a lot of stuff to support that person. Yeah. I am the family of the pole vaulter who is you. I appreciate that, George. And if I ever take up pole vaulting, I'll ask you to be there for that as well. Uh, we're on this journey together. We're watching every episode of ALF, all the ALF cartoons. Various side projects like the uh, anti-drug special with uh, the chipmunks and everybody else in it, uh, including Bugs Bunny, uh, called, uh, oh God, why is it? Cartoon All-Stars to the Rescue, which we featured in the Found Footage Festival before. It's going to be a long haul. We're glad you're with us. Uh, the main goal of the show, as we've stated in previous episodes, is we want to get Alf on this show. We want it to get so big that Paul, Paul Fusco and Alf cannot ignore us. They make an appearance on the show. And when that happens, we will retire. So spread the word, everybody. We got a really dumb show and we want the world to know about it. I'm wearing well, a hat that a viewer named Jamie sent me. Uh, so, and feel free, you can send us your Alf stuff uh, at the address on the screen right now. Not uh, just hats, right? Is that not right? just hats. Any okay. any elf stuff you've got, we will take it. We are an elf clearinghouse. Well, I am. I can't speak for George here. <laughs> it's all going to you. <laughs> and uh, viewers have sent in a lot of stuff uh, since last week. Actually, uh, Chris, who is it? Yeah, Chris G said that Alf became so popular, and he he knew it was popular. I think the first time he heard about it was in 1990, watching the lesser Lord of the Flies movie. Um, that the kids talked about it. The kids who are stranded on the island talked about it. So I pulled a clip. What difference does it make? Well, if I knew what time it was, I know it's on TV. I'm not even sure what day it is. It's Monday. You sure? I'm sure. Mondays. Mondays out. Elf comes on at 8 o'clock. It's a lot later than 8. Yeah, but I bet we're in a different time zone. I bet it's really about 8 o'clock. And Elf's causing some trouble right now. Yeah. And of course, the, the lack of Elf is what eventually made them turn on each other. Um, and that's canon for Lord of the Flies. That's also what happened on VCR Party. The, uh, the, <laughs> actually, it was the, the uh, presence of ALF is what caused you guys That's to right. turn against it, each other. It's yeah. a splinter group, yep. yep. Um, all right, so thank you, Chris G. If anybody else has any other ALF uh, pop culture things, uh, you can send those in to, uh, to nick at foundfootagefest.com. I thought it might be a good opportunity to talk about the various cast members because we're just getting into ALF and uh, we want to profile some of the actors who are on the show. Whether they had a great time making it or not, I think it's time that we pay them tribute. And I want to talk about Benji Gregory, who played the nine-year-old uh, friend of Alf on the series. Right. Uh, Benji Gregory had been acting since apparently the age of 13 months, uh, appeared as an infant on Fantasy Island and racked up many uh, TV and movie appearances before Alf. And um, as the actor, uh, his real name is... Uh, Benjamin Hertzberg, I believe. Uh, that, and that's how he's known now. Um, he had fun on the set back then because of all of the uh, little passageways underneath the set that accommodated um, the puppeteering. And, um, but it was, he said it was hard work when the lights were on and it was hot. Um, and, but he, he's quoted as saying, when ALF was canceled, it was a relief I didn't want to do any more shows. I think that's how many of the people involved <laughs> felt. Um, yeah, it seemed like incredibly hard work, but right. uh, I mean, it didn't matter to me at that time. Right. So, and so here he is. Um, TV's Brian. Right. Brian Tanner. Uh, then on the right there, he is more recently. Okay. Yeah, and you I, can tell. And um, this is his most recent picture that I could find from his YouTube page. He still has an alien-like creature that Much like you. is his best friend. Yeah. Wow. We yeah. got to have him on because we could talk 
uh, pugs. We could talk flat faced dogs. We could talk right. Alf. Right. Well, he went and ended up going to the Academy of Art University in San Francisco, and then was in the Navy for several years, and has since moved to Arizona. And I did attempt to contact him for as a birthday surprise for you. And I noticed after that, his Facebook page disappeared. So. Ah, didn't want to get cut. Con- well, I don't know. Maybe we could persuade him. Again, the show just has to get big enough that it's a great platform for people to come on and for people who don't want to get bothered to get bothered. So right. uh, don't give up. That's what I'm saying. Um, so that's Benji Gregory. Pretty good child actor. I, and he got better, too, as the seasons went on. So uh, Right. In, in this episode, he's a big he, – he, I, I feel like I noticed his – uh, his skill and for a nine-year-old that really must have taken a lot of effort good. i also like that he wore those newsy caps which i wore for uh, i went through a, probably a seven or eight year phase of wearing those too so mm. then i realized i looked too much like brian tanner right and then you went into the alf hat phase exactly it's, and that's it's ongoing all, all this kind of hat wear from now on well let's talk about episode two a cat-based episode um and uh let's get into it in a melmac recap melmac recap I'm still saying the the names of these things as if this is like a normal thing to do to do a Melmac recap. And I mean, you wrote the song for it, so I mean that's even one step further into this. It's it's uh, uh, it's infectious. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, let's talk about this episode. It's called "Looking for Lucky." We talked about last week how every episode is based on a song title, the, the titles of the episodes. This one, I think, it's "Looking for Love." It's kind uh, of a play on that because there right. isn't a, a song called "Looking for Lucky." Lucky, of course, is the tongue and cheek tongue and cheek name for uh, the Tanner's family cat. Um, on Melmac, they eat cats, and uh, they seem to have some kind of truce. Um, Alf and the cat, but here's where they really establish the dynamics between the family cat and Alf. Um, and George, are you're not, well, I don't know if you're a cat lover or not. I know you're deathly allergic to them. Uh, I am deathly allergic to them, so I've never really spent any time with them. I um, I find it um, offensive that people post cat pictures on the internet. Um, and, you know, I was thinking wow. the whole the whole cat eating thing would never fly as comedy today because every the whole world is extremely in love with cats. And yeah. um, I mean, the internet now is just for conspiracy theories and cat memes. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, I okay. think so. But you know, I, yeah, and I'm I have never had a cat, but I I am allergic to cats as well, not to the extent you are. Um, so I I'm not a cat lover per se, and maybe that's part of the reason I loved Elf as well. Hmm. Although you can see some chemistry between he and Lucky, especially in this opening scene where he's hypnotizing Lucky. This is the very first scene we see in episode three of Elf. You are getting sleepy. You are no longer a cat. You are a bagel. Dude, hey, you scared me. You ought to wear a bell. What's going on here? Um, I was, uh, I was just teaching Lucky how to tell time. Show Willie what you've learned. You were hypnotizing him, weren't you? Okay, you caught us. I'm trying to help Lucky. I like Willie trying to snap the cat out of it. <laughs> He beat his smoking problem. All right. It looks like it's once again time to restate the rules of the household. Rule number one, we do not eat members of the family. Willie, Willie, Willie. Lucky and I were just kidding around. Lucky, don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. You're not a bagel. You're not a bagel. <laughs> it's not bad. I and, mean, <laughs> jokes are pretty good. And apparently he... Um, Max Wright was like a distinguished actor from the Washington DC repertory theater. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like a lot of sitcom actors from the era, they started in theater, they went to Juilliard, whatever. And then, you know, they're on mama's family or, you know, but, right, right. but I do feel like you see Max, like I said, in the uh, inaugural episode of, of Willie's garage, the reason it's named after Willie is because I really think he's the perfect straight man for Alf. You need somebody to react against. And I do feel like he does a great job at it. No argument here. Okay, great. Uh, Cause there's going to be some trouble here. There's going to be, there's going to be some, uh, I, I don't know. It might've come to blows over zoom here. Well, uh, Oh, by the way, have you ever been hypnotized? You ever tried anything like that? 
not that I know of. Maybe I wasn't, and I was hypnotized to forget it. I hypnotized you into doing the show with me. <laughs> we, I, I did try it once. We had a hypnotist come to our college, and then you could pay like 15 bucks to stay afterwards in a smaller group, and he would guarantee you'd be hypnotized and, you know, like he would make you better at school and all this stuff. So I, I foolishly paid to do it and I did not get hypnotized at all. I just, I gave it my all, not a goddamn thing happened. So mm. not a believer. I don't think um, Lucky actually thought uh, he was a bagel. We'll never know though, really. No. Lucky's gone. And uh, I guess part of the uh, plot too is that Lucky then goes missing and um Oh, and it happens that the Tanners find out because they walk in after being gone and they find Alf like this. Just take those We're gonna get flagged for this. Show. I remember seeing the promos for this. So do I. Maybe we should have called first. Well, I had the music pretty loud. I probably wouldn't have heard the phone. <laughs> Elf has trashed the place. Willie's not happy. And worst of all, Lucky's gone missing. They're convinced that Elf has eaten Lucky. Now, I'm confused how a single individual trashes a house. I've been to a lot of parties. I've trashed <laughs> some houses, but never by myself. Yeah, but you are not an alien from another world. I we mean, don't know. Yeah, well, you might be, actually. There are theories. Uh, I'll show you the emails. All right. And Risky Business was parodied there, of course. Tom Cruise dancing in his underwear by himself. And that has been parodied. More, I mean, Homer Simpson did it. Al Bundy did that dance. Um, oh, there's a Fresh Prince, I think, where Carlton was doing the dance. And even, like, I, this seems recently. It was probably 10 years ago. But when the first Garfield CGI movie came out, the poster was, like, him doing the risky business dances if any kids knew what that was that is my least favorite song that is a song me too and it's on every wedding it's like yeah. i feel like every wedding reception i went to in the 90s everyone would get up and dance and pretend so they were doing the tom cruise thing and yeah um but uh in the so then elf they think elf has eaten um lucky and elf tries to clear his name by uh, going to rescue Lucky. So he goes and tries to um, get captured by the pound, basically, Animal Control, who, it's weird because I think, you know, the Tanner family, Willie especially, doesn't want anybody to see Alf because, they, you know, it's obvious he's an alien. But then in this episode, the dog catchers and things like that, they think he's a dog. <laughs> or some, yeah, they all think he's a dog. So, you know, which is it? Um, but, uh, and then there's a, a really weird scene I didn't include, but the family all has breakfast the next day and they're fairly chipper and just talking about like their cat has been eaten, they think, by Alf, or at the very least is still missing. And they're just like, well, have you forgiven Alf yet? And they're just eating breakfast like almost nothing's happened. Like, I feel like a cat death would be a pretty significant thing. And one thing that um, I wanted to point out here is that there's a reference that, um, uh, Andrea Elson's character makes about Lynn, yes. yeah about food that I found a little strange in retrospect. And apparently, this is throughout the series about um, her eating, which and she and she later said, and the reason why she doesn't like talking about this show at all is because it would coincide with her bulimia. So there's like if you're watching the show, there ah. there are all these references to her her and like dieting and eating and I don't know. That's just stuck out to me. So, yeah, that's pretty weird when you know that. I know, like, Tina yeah. Yothers was anorexic, too. Or, like, I mean, it's so <laughs> – being a teenage girl in the yeah. spotlight of television just must have been a living hell. With... Or just in America in the – Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ever, really. Yeah, Dexatrim was widely available at that point. Yeah. Um, so then Alf goes to the uh, – gets uh, captured, goes to the dog pound, and uh, attempts to rescue Lucky. And here's Alf in the dog pound. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it's now or never. Uh, hey, 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 all the way down. And you hear what I said? Be quiet. You're scared, Damien. All right, all right, that's it. Go. 
Poor cat. cat. Stop him. It looks like they sedated the cat, didn't it? Like, yeah, that was pure cart a pure cartoon moment of a live action series. And one crazy <laughs> thing about that is that Pound Attendant was played by Darwin Jostin, who th who was in the movie Assault on Precinct Thirteen, an incredible actor. And and as we'll He's see throughout the series, you, like character actors show up for just like one line. It just must have been a great payday at the time. I mean, a network sitcom, and you're a character actor, you might as well, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so we'll we'll keep an eye out. Maybe we'll have like character actor spotlights in future episodes. And uh, so, prehensile hands on a dog. That's <laughs> something some they never noticed. I feel like they must have given that cat some sedative or something. It's 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 like it's just kind of lifeless as uh, Michu, the circus performer in the <laughs> Alp suit, is grabbing him and running off. But maybe it was just a very chill cat. Uh, right. some, some are. And when we got a glimpse of the. Uh, terrible kid terrible dad trope yes throughout the 80s the well he was the wealthy guy with the uh he had let's see an unbuttoned uh button-up shirt a suit jacket and a gold chain no tie that means he's a bad dad and then the the kid who yuppie who, probably yeah yes who uh gets everything they want yeah it was the veruca salt willy wonka sort of character uh hey. who demanded a, a a pet she settled for the cat yeah Right, and when, when Alf is being loud and she thinks Alf is a dog, she says, and I quote, gas it, no one's going to want it want, want it now. That is dark. Yeah. Gas it. Gas that animal. Right. Um, and then, uh, of course, at the end, it turns out that uh, they find out from doing a microscopic, just for studying a hairball under the microscope, Alf's hairball, that it actually, Alf didn't eat the cat. And um, he brings that cat back. It's not lucky. Um, it's just another cat that looks like Lucky. Lucky's been in um, in Mrs. Ogmonic's basement, I guess, ran away. Right. And so it's very deus ex machina at the end. <laughs> just shows up and uh, they, they find Lucky and all is well. But it established that the family can now trust Alf with the cat. That's the main takeaway of this episode. Right. And there is a reference at the very end to the, the cat bird seat, um, the James Thurber short story, which I would guess was lost on the grade school crowd watching it. Yeah, uh, probably. It's funny when you see, you know, people like Charlie Kaufman writing for Golden Girls and things like that and <laughs> Jerry Stahl and other. I've actually been in contact with an ALF writer who's agreed to be on a future show. He said I was flattered. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. We'll have some new blood and we can get to the bottom of some of these ALF questions. Uh, and uh, I think it's time, though, for my favorite segment, ALF Crap. Ba -da -dum, da -dum, ba -da -dum. I want to start off because I'm not some Johnny Come Lately Alf fan who thinks it's ironic or fun to like Alf. I was an OG Alf fan, and you asked me if I was the world's biggest Alf fan um, in the first episode of Willie's Garage. I said, I don't know, but I can tell you that I have, I joined the Alf fan club. The summer after the series debuted, you could write for the Alf fan club. You paid six bucks and you got this, a fake signed Alf. This is what my actual one from childhood. <laughs> I've saved this in a file folder. Yo, thanks for watching. You have great taste. Best wishes your pal Alf with the little paw print over here. And it came with an issue of the Extraterrestrial Times, which I did a um, middle school humor newspaper. And I remember sort of, looking through this for ideas because they did a lot of uh jokes in here is all written from alf's point of view you could send away for more alf merchandise <laughs> including the talking Alf or not talking alf but an alf doll here some alf luggage tags which have to be out there somewhere and uh also some of an alf fan club mug that's got to be out there Ooh. somewhere pins notepads a folder um there's a spotlight on some writers Mm. And even the Q&A is, is funny. And then you have the cast from the first season and all the people involved right here. This, uh, according to everything we've read, a miserable bunch. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we all had a terrible time doing this. But they brought so much joy to us. So this is some of my ALF bona fides. This is my original Al Extraterrestrial Times. And I know I, I continue to be a member of the fan club, but this is all that survives from it. So... Um, I know there's probably more fan club stuff out there somewhere. 
Were you, uh, did your fandom wane or were you there for all the seasons? It did. I mean, I continued to watch through 1990, but I did not watch the TV movie in 96. So they mm. took a long break until after, far after uh, the fact, you know, like within the last five years, I, it was the first time I'd seen that. So yeah, it did wane as I got into high school and, and beyond, but um, it stayed pretty strong throughout. And uh, what, what have you dug up for us this week? Oh man. So, <laughs> so I found this, uh, this cake pan from 1988. This is the first, this is at first I thought this was it. And I thought, I guess you ice your own face, but then, uh, this is from a company called Wilton. And it turns out that they actually made a separate, they, they made a face that came with it that you put on top of the cake. Um, you, do you have this? I do. And I actually made the cake. <laughs> I made the cake and it came with the plastic thing. I found, yes, I made a, a cake like that. And I learned how to do the icing and everything. I'll see if I can dig up that, uh, the picture of mine uh, okay. somewhere. But yes, I do have the elf cake pan. I found it at a thrift store in Alaska of all places. And uh, so, and then finally, I think within the last couple of years, I made, I made the cake. Did it have the face with it? It did. It had the face oh. and uh, instructions on how to make it and what colors to use. So yeah. Um, what's the next thing I wanted to show? Oh, I have, uh, oh, uh, Nate, my friend Nate said, Hey, I think this is an alpha reference. And I didn't realize it until I saw Willie's garage. There's a band called the Akmonics <laughs> spelled a little bit differently in the show. They spell it O C H, which I mean, you wouldn't know unless you like, like read scripts, but, um, they only had one album called party fever, but I listened to them. They're pretty darn good. Mm. The Akmonics. Any yeah, other Alf references in the songs or that you could hear? No, no Alf references in the songs. But uh, we have a, we each week have been asking, we've been doing contests. Um, this week I have two packs of sealed uh, Alf. This is the uh, second series of Alf trading cards. Comes with gum in it. And uh, it's they're pretty exciting. Uh, plus uh, some bonus gifts uh, to the person who answers this question the best. And that is, name a band, name a fictional band with an obscure, based on an obscure ELF reference. So you know how there, there's like a band called Otto's Jacket, which is a reference to the Cypress Hill Homer Palooza episode of The Simpsons. They, Lisa says, oh, they go into Cypress Hill's dressing room. She says, smells like Otto's Jacket. The band name themselves that so like what is a band that doesn't exist but um if you had to name a band on an obscure elf reference what would it be and uh, you can send that to uh, nick at foundfootagefest.com and just to clarify it doesn't have to be like a play on an existing band like fleetwood melmac no 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 it shouldn't be that it should be okay. you know it, it could be called hypnotizing lucky for example okay um or you know any any obscure reference from it can be from any episode, but, you know, we've watched three so far. So, you know, maybe pull it from one of those. And uh, you have a week. You have until the next Wednesday to uh, send us those. And uh, what, do you, what do you have for more elf crap? Um, let's see. Well, I, I showed um, a video game each of the last two weeks, so it seemed like I should show the Sega elf yes, game. Yes, this did is you the one this? I had. I did okay. have this. And uh, well, let me show apparently a clip it's worth it. a lot of money now. Um, well, to me, it looked like. Yes! Oh my God! It, it looks like Castlevania to me. Yeah. Um, and let, let me just scroll around so you can see the different levels. And... <laughs> so anyhow, it looks pretty like it. Uh, I don't know. It looks okay, but uh, it, according to the reviews, were not great. Um, Sega8bit.com called it. Uh, quote, not exactly the worst Sega Master System game out there, but one of the worst games to play for any third generation console. Yeah, I, I remember even as a huge Elf fan playing it and kind of like playing, getting past the first level and being like, I just, I, it's not worth me investing more time in this. Right. And, and it had a, if read a Wikipedia for its checkered development history, they had Ooh, like really? two, $200 to do all the music for it. And, <laughs> um, yeah. There's a documentary called Console Wars right now that's out Ooh. about Sega versus Nintendo. I think it's mostly talking about the Genesis era of Sega, but I was an OG Sega fan. Right. And uh, 
I just thought the graphics were better. I thought it was a cooler system, cooler looking system, and I missed out on a lot of good games. <laughs> but well, I, I, I had a Nintendo, and I traded it for a Sega Master System. Oh, really? Which um, because I was bored, and I think what what were your favorite games on? Um, Wonder Boy. Uh, Wonder Boy was like a Mario clone sort of okay. that I really liked, and I remember pausing it for three days. <laughs> while I would come back from school and work on it because you couldn't continue or anything. So right, right. you had to just um, ha do it in one run. What were your favorite games? Uh, there was a game that was built into the console that I can't remember the name of. That was sort of like... A, it was a like, snail maze, right? Oh, well, I, maybe I'm thinking of something else. So was it something... Astro Warriors, maybe? Oh, yeah, yeah. That came with it. Yeah, Astro okay. Warriors and... Yeah, and Alien, I... But. I mean, it was a pretty, like blah game but i loved playing it i think it was hang on slash astro warriors right. i loved that as well yes right um, but yeah the graphics were great so. yes and the pro wrestling game was good too mm. but it's not a sega master system uh show, show. It's, a, it's, called the <laughs> <laughs> no, it's my fault <laughs> i wanted to show you what i think is one of the most disturbing alpha items i teased this last week and uh, i saw this on etsy and it i think it deserves a wider audience Ooh. It is a willy warmer with the keywords ALF, erotic stuff, sexy toys, erotic toy, crochet, sexy, crochet ALF, Peter Heater, cock socks, cock warmer, and Nakurnan Jack. And uh, so here you see the willy warmer is a crocheted ALF thing that I guess goes over your uh, member. <laughs> Well, there is that image to the bottom right. Yeah, that this has is the haunting disturbing me. one that I did not include to uh, as the featured image, but <laughs> there's a little bit of it, handmade by Gordana Kristovic, and uh, yeah, you get to see a little how what that would look like in in uh, practice. That is the Willy Warmer. It's twenty five dollars. So as soon as I get into twenty five spare dollars, I may have to order the Willy Warmer. Just to well, say I have it. I mean, yeah, no, I know your costume for the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I will show my cake on the next episode because my, my picture of it is, isn't nearby, but I'll, I'll uh, show that next week. Any other ALF crap? Sure. Uh, I'm just big on these ALF um, uh, tattoos, and this is the oh. no problemo German ALF. The catchphrase uh, in German. Yeah. So uh, I, I can't – Would you? so I don't know. I just can't imagine getting an ALF tattoo. Or any tattoo, but ALF specifically. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've gotten dumber tattoos on purpose. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the ALF one, it's really branding yourself. And if something, like, really bad comes out about ALF, I don't know if I'd want that branded on me. But um, who knows? I could be persuaded. We'll see. Go fund me. We're, we're in this for the long haul, whether you like it or not, George. Great. Next week on Willie's Garage... We have our very first ALF theme remix sent in by a viewer, and we encourage people to remix ALF, ALF themes. But also, ALF talks to President Reagan on the show. It is historic, and we hope you'll join us next week in Willie's Garage. Good night, everybody. Come crashing Willie's Garage.